Hi and welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to cover my longevity experiment biometric data for September, October, November, December of 2024, which marks the 69 month point of my longevity experiment. And we can compare this data to the data I recorded right back since April 2019. Let's start by looking at my subjective stats. Let's take a look at the supplements I was taking over the last four months. Stick with it because I've added something to my stack. 1.5 grams of NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, one gram of trans resveratrol, 1,000 milligrams, one gram of metformin, 1.5 grams of TMG, trimethylglycine, 5,000 international units of vitamin D3, 120 micrograms of vitamin K2, that's the MK7 version, 250 milligrams of magnesium, L3 and 8 version, 200 milligrams, sorry, 400 milligrams of high molecular weight, hyaluronic acid, 2.4 grams of fisetin, and I take that on the first, second and third of each month, 2.4 grams of quercetin, and again, I only take that on the first, second and third of each month. And if you want to know why I do periodic dosing and not every day, there's a link in the description below to the periodic dosing video. Cert6 activator, 400 milligrams per day. DIM, 600 milligrams per day. Glynac, that's glycine and NAC, N-acetylcysteine, 800 milligrams a day, five grams of creatine, that's one month on and then three months off, 800 grams of EPA and 600 grams of DHA. I also take now one gram of berberine that's added to the mix. So that's the supplements I've been taking for the last four months. So I take the majority of my supplements between 6 and 6.15 in the morning. My dim is split into three separate doses, 200 milligrams first thing in the morning, six o'clock, Second one between 11 and noon, and the last one between 9 and 9.30, just before I turn in for bed. Now, metformin, I still take one gram a day. I now also take one gram of berberine, and I take all of this along with my um, omega-3, because that's supposed to be taken with food, before I have my main meal of the day. And again, I've slightly changed the way I eat, but more about that later. I still take my resveratrol on the days I don't train. Uh, so I train with weights Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I take my resveratrol Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and sometimes on a Sunday. So that's it for the supplements I was taking and also when I was taking them. Moving on to diet and fasting. Let's first of all look at my fasting. If you remember in the past, I was on 16-8 for the majority of the time and I was doing OMAD three days a week. I'm now OMAD every single day of the week. And I give myself a two hour eating window and that window somewhere between, depending on if I'm feeling hungry or not, between noon and four. If I start at noon, I finish eating by two. Uh, and if I start at two, I finish by four. Let's move on to the diet. So up to lunch and lunch is breakfast, if you like. So between 12 and four, I only drink water and black coffee. For the main meal of the day, um, normal, which is meat, vegetables, um, a majority of my calories are in this meal, which is sometimes, which is somewhere between noon and four. Uh, a lot more chicken than they used to be. Um, quite a lot of beef now. We found a good place to get ground beef. Some cruciferous vegetables, they are still hard to get. Uh, although bacon and eggs is traditionally a breakfast meal, this is my first and only meal of the day. So sometimes I'm having two or three uh, homemade sausages uh, and six eggs. Snacks, if I do snack, and that is very rarely, uh, it'll be a very small bowl of nuts. And I tend to snack if, if I'm feeling hungry and I have my main meal between uh, 12 and 2. Come maybe 5, 6 o'clock and I'll have a small bowl of nuts, which is probably a big handful, maybe two handful of nuts, uh, and a coffee with heavy cream. But that's very, very rarely. Alcohol, in the last four months, I've drunk no wine and no beer whatsoever. And that's including... Um, the birthdays that we've attended, because we've got quite a few in November, December, and also the Christmas period. One night a week, my wife and I sit outside on a Saturday night, and we, we used to have a glass of wine. Um, I've now changed that to uh, very small vodka, and it's either one or two vodkas, and that's with Diet Coke, Diet Coke uh, or Diet Pepsi. Uh, and a couple of those times, I've sat outside, I've started to drink the Diet Pepsi, not touch the vodka, uh, and I've had maybe two, three cans of just the diet soda between six in the evening and maybe 10 at night before we before we turn in on a Saturday. So that's it for my diet and fasting. So moving on to overall feeling and specifically energy, you can see the options there. Over the last four months, it has been somewhere between high and steady and improving consistently. 
That said, there were a couple of hiccups over the last four months, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Moving on to overall feeling and napping. No napping at all in the last four months. Uh, you'll know if you follow the channel, if you've subscribed, that I post my sleep scores uh, very frequently. Some issues with my Ultra Human Ring lately. They're send, sending a new one, but my Mi Band has been working fine. No issues with sleep and no need to nap. Motivation. Uh, motivation wax and wanes, but my attitude is still good. It's motivation makes me want to stay in bed in the morning if it's the weekend. My attitude gets me up gets me to the gym and gets me walking the dog, even when it's pouring with rain. And it's been doing a lot of that here in the Philippines over the last four months. Uh, and when we're out walking and we've done the first loop, the dog's trying to head back home. Uh, she gets yanked to the right and we go around again, even though it's um, persistently raining. Gym performance. Um, so still weight training on Monday, Wednesday and Friday between 40 and 50 minutes. Ruck run on a Tuesday. Uh, that's about 40, 45 minutes. And I'm adding ever so slightly 50 meters, uh, 100 meters every week or every two weeks, uh, and a one hour bike ride on a Saturday. That's exactly the same. If you are subscribed again, you'll know I usually post my heart rate scores after the ruck run and after the bike ride in the community tab. So injuries, yes. For the first time in a long time, I've had an injury to my right calf. I was running um, and the lady that massages me normally gives me a sports massage when she got into my calf muscle. She said that three of the big nerves, I'm not exactly sure what she meant, has spasmed. Um, and that's kept me out of the gym for a month. And then it took me another week or two to get back to my normal running rate. Um, so for the last quarter, I didn't train for a month in total. And then when I did, it took me about another 10 to 14 days to get back to what I was. Um, what happened was I normally run the, the outward leg starting off by walking, running a bit, walking, running a bit and getting a bit faster with the run. And then when I get to the turnaround point, I'm running quite quickly. And there are a series of telegraph poles on the side of the road. And I sprint between two telegraph poles and then I walk or I jog between the next two. And then I sprint again. Um, I was feeling so good this particular morning. I'd run down the hill. I was on the flat um, where I would normally be sprinting back. Uh, I tried to sprint on the way out and it just seized up. Um, felt like I'd been hit by a train. I fell over, uh, tried to carry on, couldn't even carry on, turned around and limped all the way home. Um, so that was it for injuries. Sickness, again, first time in a long time I can remember I was sick. It was a, a throat and upper chest infection, lasted about a week. Again, took me about another week to um, 10 days to get back to my normal fitness uh, regime or regimen. It was, it kept me out of the gym and it also stopped me from running. Um, so in the last four months, I've been not running or in the gym because of an injury for between four and six weeks and then for a throat infection for again, seven to 10 days. So that's it for my uh, subjective stats. Let's now look at my objective stats. So moving on to my subjective stats and first weight, you can see here that I was 186 pounds, which is 84.37. And that has gone down to 184.8. That's 83.84 kilos. That's down 0 0.53 kilos. That's 1.16 pounds since the last check. And down 8.16 kilos, 18 pounds since the start. I really did think I was going to put weight on with me being out of the gym uh, and also not being able to run and cycle for quite a lot of the last four months, as well as the last four months, including a couple of birthdays and also Christmas and New Year. BMI, my last check for my BMI was 27.5. It is now 27.3. So not a great drop, but heading in the right direction. Down 0 0.2 since the last check, down 2.7 since the start. And you'll know I don't put much weight in the BMI check, uh, BMI test because it treats fat and muscle uh, exactly the same in the formula. And they're certainly not the same compounds. 27.3 still has me technically as overweight. Percentage body fat, you can see it was 19.50. That's now 20% body fat, which is up 0 0.5, which is not good um, since the last check, but still down 6.5 since the start. Moving on to muscle mass, you can see there that it was 36.8% last time. It's now 35.5. So that's down 1.3 since the last check, but same as it was from the start. Now, you know that as people age, especially when they get over the age of 30, 40, 50, I'm now 60, 
um, sarcopenia sets in and there's a gradual loss of muscle mass. So looking at me nearly six years ago, uh, I'm where I've always been. That said, had I not been out of the gym for four, five, six weeks and not been able to cycle there, not at the same time, but at a different time for maybe two weeks, um, I think if I'd been able to have done that, I probably would have increased my muscle mass. Basal metabolic rate, you can see the last time it was 1751, it's now 1717. Um, so that's it for my basal metabolic rate. Moving on to visceral fat, 12 it was last time. You can see this time it is still 12. Now I've always talked about my problems with this. Go from 30 to 12 took a long time. Um, and going from 12 and staying at 12, how long is it going to take me to move uh, down to 11? Because the last move from 12 to 12, is that 12 to actually 12.8 or is that 12 to 12.3? I'm not too sure. I wish the scales were slightly more accurate. My waistline was 34. Christmas, no exercise, etc. Uh, birthdays, I think this was going to go up. It's actually stayed the same at 34, which is quite good. Then we're moving on to sleep. You can see the scores I've got there. I'll scroll down ever so slowly so you can check them. Um, you'll see that I was able to record my light, deep and REM sleep for a large period of my experiment. But unfortunately, when I changed to the Mi Band 8, and I've also got the Ultra Human Ring, they don't uh, record, they record light, deep and REM on a daily basis, but they don't record it on a weekly and monthly basis, which my Mi Band 7 did used to do. So for the last quarter, you can see there September, the average overall sleep was eight hours and nine minutes. Uh, average for October was seven hours, 43. Average for November was seven hours, 57, and the average for December was seven hours and 46. And if you follow the channel, if you subscribe, you know I do post my sleep scores and my deep and my REM sleep, which I think are the most important, are always over an hour. And sometimes both of them can be over two hours as well, which I'm very happy with indeed. So that's it for sleep. So moving on to my rest and heart rate, you can see I started recording this in May of 2020. I'll scroll down slowly so you can pause the video if you want to take a more detailed look. Um, so for this quarter, you can see there my rest in heart rate was in September 53 and October 54. But November is 53 and December was 57. Remember in December, that's when I got the injury. So I wasn't running as much. So my rest in heart rate did go up slightly. The ultra human ring that records that um, doesn't decimalize the number. So it's just round numbers. When you check out what the quarter was, the quarter work, sorry, the, the third of the year, the four months, works out at 54.25. For a person who is between 56 and 65, which I now am, that uh, rested heart rate puts me in the athlete bracket, which is great. I don't think I am, but I will take it. Uh, then we're going to move on to my grip strength. Last time, 110 for my left hand, 123 for my right hand. You can see this time down slightly, 108 for my left hand, 0.2, and 119.9 for my right hand. Um, had I not had the injury which kept me out of the gym for four or five, maybe six weeks, I think this would have been the same, if not a bit higher, because I've been using obviously my hands to grip and lift weights. That said, this still has me for be between between the age of 60 and 64, more than 105, which those definitely are, has me in the strong uh, range for men. Then my steps, you can see there, uh, my target's 5,000. I started in February of 2023, adding steps as a metric. I'll scroll down, you can check those. Uh, so for the last four months, my step count has been 7,891 for September, October 7,931, November the average was 7,176, and December the average was down to 5,773. That's because I wasn't running uh, every Tuesday and also where I would normally walk um, if it was down to the gym to do a to do a, uh, a check on the build, I would either ride my bike ever so slowly or I would drive. So uh, that affected the step count. That said, for the last four months, the step count has been 7,192, which is still well above the 5,000 that I am aiming for. So that's it for my objective stats. So there you go. I'd be interested to see what you think in the comment section below. I've made some notes. I personally thought they were going to be much, much worse. This three month or this four month period I've just covered does cover for me quite a few birthdays, almost Christmas and the new year in the Philippines, 
all of those activities revolve around food and always around excesses. Uh, also, the, the four weeks when I was injured and I couldn't run or bike ride, um, add on to that maybe a week for getting back into it completely. And then also the short sickness, which kept me off the, uh, the gym and off my bike uh, and running for another week at a different time in that period. And then probably another half a week or a week when it took me to get back to my uh, to my normal standard, if you like. Uh, I thought the results were going to be much worse. So no running, no cycling, no no gym, etc. Now, I think uh, trends are key, uh, hence the reason for gathering all this data. If you just take one of these updates, and I've done quite a few now in isolation, it probably wouldn't tell you a lot. Now, according to the vast majority of the research that I've done, uh, including a, star, uh, a study from Harvard, and there's a link to that in the description below, most adults gain somewhere between one and two pounds of weight per year, and I'm guessing they're not packing on lean muscle. Uh, this also comes along with a one to two increase in waist circumference. My waist at the start of this was 39 inches. It's now down to 34. If I'd follow the norms, um, I should be somewhere near 49 and not 34. My weight started at 202 pounds. Uh, it's now 184. If I'd follow the norms of adding, uh, as the studies have shown, I could be somewhere up near 214 pounds, not 184. Add to that, my body fat percentage is not really growing and my muscle mass percentage is not drastically decreasing. It's exactly the same as it was uh, nearly six years ago now. Uh, the trend says that sarcopenia strikes sometimes somewhere in your 40s or 50s and every decade you lose a percentage of muscle mass. For me, that's not the case, which I think is good. Um, and as I said in the, in the video, had I been allowed to carry on training, lifting weights, for that probably about a two month period in that four month uh, bracket altogether, I probably would have been able to pack on more muscle mass and I wouldn't just have been the same as I was four months ago. So I think all in all, not too bad. I'd be interested to see what you think in the comment section below.